Welcome along everyone. So we are looking at online shopping. How do we want to be safe when we shop online? Well, there's lots of ways that we can shop online. There's lots of different things we can do. So as I was saying earlier, this workshop is presented by the federal government under the auspices of Be Connected. Be Connected is a federal government initiative uh, which, is sent, which allows uh, seniors to learn all about technology online. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I'm actually just showing you now there we go uh, so here is the be connected home page so if you've never uh, used be connected before I really recommend that you do so and jump on if you've got a pen uh, available to you I strongly recommend you type down or write down this email address type it up or write it down be connected dot e safety dot gov dot a u that, e, that address again, be connected, B E C O N N E C T E D, be connected, dot E safety, so safety with an E in the front, dot gov, G O V dot A U. It's also on the screen that you can see now uh, here as well. There we are, be connected, dot E safety, dot gov, dot A U. Um, pretty amazing little website. Uh, I love this course. I think it's pretty amazing. Now, what I would like you all to do at some point, and don't do this now, okay, uh, but if you are interested, go into the sign up section. If you've not signed up to be connected, please do so. It's free. Yes. So when you click on sign in or sign up, you can go down to create a new account. This essentially allows Ready Tech Go to keep the funding that we're getting from the federal government because today's session is sponsored by the federal government and they've given us funding uh, based on the, the amount of people we can get signed up to the Be Connected website, okay? Uh, so be connected, beconnected.esafety.gov.au. When you go in there, just want your first name, last name. Your support centre is going to be Ready Tech Go. Pop your email address and create a password. Uh, once you've got all that set up, it just means that the feds know that you've been doing some sessions with us and you get access to a raft of amazing information as well on um, Be Connected because uh, once you sign up and sign up for free, you can go into the topic library and there are so many different topics. It's incredible. Absolute basics, getting to know your device, getting started online, safety first, online skills, connecting to others. <gasps> <sighs> all about data, Wi-Fi, mobile networks, online hobbies, all about apps, game center practice area, iPhones, Android phones, iPads, tablets. <sighs> you name it, it's in there. There's a lot in there. It's absolutely fantastic. So I do recommend that for those of you who've never been into the Be Connected website before that you go and give it a look. It's really, really well worth your time. The course is entirely free because it's paid for by your tax dollars, which is absolutely fantastic. Yay for our tax dollars, uh, which is really, really good. So let's have a look at the Be Connected website. I'm gonna share the online shopping module with you now. This is the module we're gonna look at today. There's a couple of videos, there's some practicals in here as well, a whole lot of really great little information for you. Uh, so let's go and share that screen. Here we go, you can see what's on my screen. Okay, so we've got today's part of this course is an introduction, a getting started, payment methods, and your consumer rights because you have rights as a consumer when you shop online. So there's always uh, a right for you to be able to return a good if you buy it online, if it's faulty, uh, if it doesn't work, if it dies the day you get it, all that sort of stuff. You know, even returning those shoes, that you bought, yes, you could get them returned as well, which is fantastic. I can see all of you as well, uh, just a reminder, right? those of you who have your cameras on, I can see all of you. So I'm glad that you're watching. So our introduction today, so let's get into that. Now, those timings that you see on the Be Connected website, just in, incidentally, are what it should take for the average person to go through it. I'm gonna give you some further information. 
So we really enjoy shopping and others try to keep it short as simple as possible. I'm a loop man. I know what I want, where I want to get it, and I work it out in a loop and I go one, two, three, four, done. In, out, done. Shopping's taken care of. I can be all done in an hour flat, which is exactly the way I like to keep it. Some people, however, do like to meander around. The nice thing about online shopping is that whether or not you're a looper or whether or not you're a grazer, you can do both. It's totally up to you. So we're going to look at some of the benefits of shopping online as some of the basic advice as well. So Australia's got millions of online shoppers. I know some of you do shop, which is fantastic. Uh, you shop online and uh, more people shop online every day. And of course, the world we live in at the moment, shopping online is becoming the new norm, uh, particularly for things like groceries. Unfortunately, we can't shop online for a haircut. Uh, but you know, what do you do? You never know, one day you might be able to. So you can shop any time of the day or night on the internet. So you know, if it strikes you at 3 a.m. in the morning that you wanna buy that Blu-ray or that book that you've been thinking about and you can't get it out of your head, yes, you can. You can even just pick up your phone and go shopping right from your phone. So you can buy a DVD, you can do your weekly shop, buy new clothes, you can get it all delivered straight to your door, which is great. And yes, they often now deliver right to the door and they do contactless uh, deliveries now, uh, which is fantastic. So you can always make sure someone gets delivered. Although be aware too at the moment, because there is so much going on in the world of deliveries that uh, a lot of deliveries are probably a day or two slower than they usually are from a lot of shops. And that's just simply because companies like Australia Post and DHL and UPS and so on, they're just absolutely flat out. They've got so much work on with people wanting to actually do a lot of online shopping. So don't be surprised if what you order might take a little bit longer than you think it might have, just maybe a day or two. So what are the, the two main benefits of shopping online? Well, you can shop online at a time that's easy for you. Yes, you can. Anytime you like, you can go shopping, which is fantastic. Online shopping is convenient, but it's always more expensive. Well, no, not necessarily. And yet that's not quite right. You can compare uh, prices and products. It's often cheaper. And a lot of the shops that you go to already at retail have online stores you know those of you know me really well know I like to buy shoes uh, I like to buy books uh, all sorts of different things all of those things that I get at retail I can also get online as well now, and of course, with the beautiful thing about shopping online, there's a wealth of stores from around the world you can access. Um, so you can see your local shopping center at the time the local shopping center is open for business. You can shop from those really big brand names as well. So, you know, if you can't get down to Maya, well, you can shop from the Maya online store. You know, if you like something a little bit more expensive and say you like a bit of Gucci, well, you can buy from the Gucci online store as well. So, um, Yes, uh, if anyone wants to buy me some Gucci, I won't say no. Now, so let's move on. Don't worry, don't have to buy me Gucci. That'd be a bit of a worry. Now, so let's talk about some tips to say, stay safe when you're shopping online because there's some fundamentals here that are really good to follow. So, first of all, know your retailer. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and I like to Google up the name of the retailer. See if there's any information about them, particularly if it's a retailer that I've never shopped with before. If I've seen them on the high street, you know, if, if I've seen their retail shop, that's a good sign that they're probably fine for online. However, every now and again, you might find that you come across a store that you're not aware of online. And so this is where it's good to look them up. So check out their website first, look for reviews. You can also see on the presentation here, we're talking about using a padlock. If you have a look at the screen that I'm on right now, you can see that I've highlighted and just where my pointer is, there is a padlock on the left hand side of the Be Connected website address. What's that is telling me here is this little padlock tells me that the website is a secure website. So that little padlock there is telling me that it's a secure website. That's great. Also, if you might see HTTPS for Sam, 
Well, it's HTTPS. If you see HTTPS before a website, that's telling you that it's a secure website as well, which is absolutely perfect. Any website with a padlock or a HTTPS means that your data is what's called encrypted. So any information that goes between your computer and their server is scrambled, essentially like scrambled eggs. And when it gets to the other side, it's unscrambled and used in a form which is secure and can take your payment. So HTTPS. So now what you're buying, I like to do reviews, you know, especially if it's something that you've thought about buying, but you're not exactly sure. So again, jump online, look it up on a Google search or a web search, read some reviews about that product. Is it reliable? Have people enjoyed it? Uh, did they regret buying it after a while? What you'll often find with a lot of products that you're researching or looking for online is that there will be various online reviews of that product. So have a little look at that. You know, you might see something on a retailer's website and you're curious about it. Before you go and buy it, check the reviews there, but also do a couple of other checks for other reviews. Know more about that product before you purchase it. You might be looking for one of those robotic uh, vacuum cleaners. And there's a few of those out now. Now, obviously, they're not all the same. So there might be one which is better than the other. So this is where you could look up the name of the robotic vacuum cleaner and find out what they're like. I know my sister has one and the kids absolutely love their robotic vacuum cleaner at home. And there's a few of those around. So there's lots of different places to know where you can have a look for reviews and so on as well. Okay, we're going to come back to questions just at the end of this little part. There's a few more uh, bits to tell you. Okay, the, and the Choice website is also a great one. Just withhold on your questions for me for a few moments, everyone. Uh, we'll come to a few questions just at the end of this section. So there's lots of uh, places where you can get reviews as well. How are you paying? So credit card or PayPal, obviously. Uh, they're your best uh, bets, although now you've got options such as Afterpay as well. Um, there's some comparison sites too for you to think about. Shopbot com.au is a comparison site um, and there's lots of places you can find online reviews you can review this uh, store things like that little good little google chats so uh, if you're using a credit card or paypal you've also got extra protection when you're shopping online because the nice thing about google um, about uh, credit cards and paypal is that they have insurance built in so with that insurance, it allows uh, you to be covered in case something goes wrong, that product doesn't arrive, at least you're insured with the bank and uh, you can have your money refunded to you in what's done, um, what's known as a chargeback. So read the small print on uh, sellers' websites. So some companies will have some terms and conditions when it particularly comes to things uh, such as uh, returns. It's really important to be careful about what things are getting returned. If you're buying something that's a very big item, you know, like a large bulky item such as a TV or a fridge, you may want to check with the retailer about what their returns policy is. Usually what would happen with an item such as that is that if it's a fridge or a TV, the retailer should organise the return of the item, but you should always double check with them. Some retailers will say, oh, look, if it's it's a small item, we'll send you a courier bag and you can send it back. Other retailers may say, no, it's totally up to you to send it back to us, but we'll still replace it. So do check with the retailer, uh, first of all, what their returns policy is. Um, so, you know, if there's nothing there, then the retailer does have to pay for it. So I like to keep a record of what I've been buying. I've got my bank account, but if it's something that I've purchased from overseas or that I've ordered, what I'll do is I'll write a little notebook down or I'll have a little spreadsheet up as part of my budget to say what I've purchased, when I've purchased it, how much it was, and what method I used to pay for it. That way I can track it down because 
that way I can track it down because it might be something I could say claim under tax, you know, and if you could claim it on your tax, fantastic. You've got a, a record of it, which helps to prove your purchase of the item, but also in case something goes missing, you know, you might actually be really waiting on the delivery. You've got several things coming at once and then something nags you in the background. Oh, that parcel still hasn't arrived. Right. Better go and check it. So keep a record of what you're purchasing, particularly for your big items or anything that could be business related or that could you get you a tax deduction. So, here we go, we need to give a word of advice to a friend. So a friend of yours wants to go shopping online, what two pieces of advice would you give them? Here we go, this is interesting. So file any emails about what you've bought for future reference. That's a good piece of advice. The reason is that you'll often get with a retailer an email to say, hi John, you've just bought XYZ product for X amount of dollars, it's due to arrive on, your order number is, please contact us on blah, 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 for any problems. Usually also you might even get a tracking number. I love a tracking number. Tracking numbers are fantastic because tracking numbers allow you to go and actually check with the courier company where your item is. I'm one of those terribly impatient people that sees something arriving to me online as a present and I love to track where it is. I love getting things in the mail. Um, so, you know, having things arrive always feels like I'm getting a present delivered, which is really, really sweet. So I love that. So yes, definitely keep uh, some correspondence every time you buy something, keep the email because you can, you know, have it there if there's anything that goes wrong with the retailer and you've got some proof of your purchase. Always check your terms and conditions, read that small print, particularly if it's a retailer you've never used before and, you know, you might have the odd worry. So do go ahead and have a little read of that small print, helps to keep you safe. And lastly, should you send your financial details in an email? Oh, hell no. Please never do that. Oh, my lordy, Lou. Never put your bank details or your credit card details on an email to a retailer. That's asking for trouble. It is asking for trouble big time. That is just saying, take my money. Yeah, so just don't do it. Um, if you ever have to advise someone of credit card details, try and do it over the phone. Try and do it in a secure way. Uh, but never put anything financial down on emails where you can. If you can make phone calls, fantastic, do it. But retailers usually always have a payment portal. If you're buying something, they'll always have a checkout page. And uh, we'll, go, we'll go shopping in a little while and we'll show you some of uh, the checkouts that you can use as well, because I love to go shopping. So. And while I'm thinking of it as well, um, one thing I've noticed at the shops lately, and it's a bad habit I see people do, is that with their credit or debit cards, when they go to tap and go, they've got the card out. And it's really obvious for the world to see what the card number is and what sort of card you've got. Can I recommend just, this is a little side pro tip for you all, that if you do go to use your tap and go payment cards, do what I'm doing here. Hand across the front of the card. You sort of feel quite regal in some ways because you can do the royal wave. <laughs> oh yes, it's my money. I'm the queen, I never carry money. It's all plastic, darling, yes. But what essentially you're doing is by having your hand over, when you go to, to the tap and go, you're tap and go like that face down essentially so the number is obscured by your hand and the reader still makes contact but no one sees what type of cards you've got okay because i've seen a few people you know particularly if you've say got a rather nice platinum visa or mastercard or amex or one of those or a really good card you don't want to flash it around if you're at the supermarket definitely just feel free to tap excuse me Right, that's better, out than in. Now, so yeah, just keep your hand over the top of it so no one sees what sort of card you're using when you go to checkout. So there's your little pro tip for that one. So our little word of advice was a great one. We've seen our example shopper. Okay. So, 
And okay, bear with me, everyone. The site's decided to go down. We're going to come on back through. Here we go. We know our retailer. We like to check out the reviews. We like to see what the terms and conditions are. We like to check all of that stuff out because we need the friend of advice. So when you shop online, you can buy at a time or a place that is convenient to you, which is absolutely fantastic. I like that idea that hey, there's that CD I didn't buy five years ago and I've just found it online somewhere. Oh, great, I'll go and buy it. Especially if there's really rare music because a lot of, uh, there's some really great little websites around. You can even just type in the name of the album as well and you can buy a lot of rare cds and vinyls now through online stores so if you love your rare vinyls definitely uh that's a good place to go so what's next oh well here we go this lovely person is looking to buy some clothes online now it can save you time and money let's actually in this particular section um, how to browse and find things, put them in our baskets as well. We're going to hopefully as well during this workshop today, we'll talk about ShopBot and comparison sites where we can save you some money too. So essentially, Katrina doesn't like to go shopping. She, you know, hates for doing all of that sort of stuff. So she's looking for a box set of her favourite DVD show, of her favourite show. She's come up to the ABC website online and at the top she's got search the ABC shop. When she clicks in there, oh, well, she likes my favourite show, so she must have good taste. She likes Doctor Who. So once I then uh, click in the term and I hit the little magnifying glass, whenever you're searching for something online, the magnifying glass is a cue. The cue for query, there we go. We can see that we want series 10 part one. She's clicked it, chosen it, and then all she needs to do now is click on add to cart to add it to her purchases once she's actually added that to her cart she can now come up to the green button which says pay securely now that pay securely now button essentially says to the website hey i want to take this and did you notice that there's a padlock next to the pay securely now so that's telling us that uh, it's a safe site as well. So we know that's a good one. It's got a padlock there. Ah, click once on the pay securely now button. Right, okay, that's very nice. So Katrina's basket here is in the top corner and you can see that there's a little trolley symbol with the number one. So that trolley symbol is telling us that she's got one item in the basket. Is she going to add more or less to that as well? Katrina needs to get a recipe book for her sister. So she goes through and has a little look. Here's a little video here of Katrina browsing for items online. Katrina can find the type of book she's looking for by clicking on the arrow icon next to the category menu and clicking in the reference box to look for cookbooks. Now the page has changed to display only reference books. Katrina can't find what she's looking for yet, so she selects the left arrow until she finds a cookbook she likes and presses the Shop Now button to take a closer look. Katrina reads through the product information. She then decides she would also like to read what other buyers thought of the product. So she selects the three customer reviews link. Customer reviews are a great way to see how good a product is before you buy. Yes, I love to know what people have thought about something before I buy it because it's actually always really important to know. You know, was this bad? Was this good? Now, Katrina sees an option where she could register and she checks with Katie, hey, is that normal? And Katie says, yes, it's normal. The reason it's normal to register with sites, because what if you go back to shop with them again? Instead of having to put your address details and payment details and all of that back in again, which is just time consuming, if you register with a site that you know you're going to go shopping again with, it saves all that information for you. And often you can get membership benefits with lots of sites as well. So you can see here that she's got an option to sign up. She's got a first name, last name, 
She's popped in an email address and created a password as well. Various websites will ask for different information, but usually it's going to be first name, last name, email address, and some sort of password. So that way, at least, that they've got a record to come back to you for future. A lot of websites have a guest checkout. So if you don't want to register, you can use the guest checkout. So it means that they just keep the information that you give them for the payment, the delivery and communication, but they don't restore it on their systems. It actually essentially has gotten rid of after the delivery has gone through. So Katrina's registered, she's ready to buy. She's uh, going to be asked to select the delivery option. The general rule here with delivery options is the faster you want it, the more you're going to pay. So if it's coming in, say, from overseas, you could be looking at some fairly expensive delivery options. You can often have things put on next flight deliveries or International Express, but it can be very expensive. So if you go snail mail, it'll be slower, but a lot cheaper. So here we go. Let's have a look at Katrina again. First. Katrina presses the Add to Cart button to choose a product to buy and view her cart. In her shopping cart page, Katrina can check her order to make sure she has chosen the right book and quantity. Now, Katrina can scroll down and select her delivery method. In this case, she selects eParcel Delivery and then presses the Pay securely now button to continue. Now, just one thing there. Did you notice that when she came back to the delivery options here on this, there we go. You can see that we've got eParcel Australia, uh, three business days at 750, the Express eParcel for 950. Uh, usually two business days there. Then you can see that you've got the international air mail, untraceable, uninsured. Oh, bugger. That's a bit of a worry. We might not find it if it gets lost. But there it is, the international air mail, $22.95. And international DHL, three to 14 business days, traceable and insured. So that's $30, but essentially you'd have that inside three days if you lived uh, in a capital city. So particularly if it's something coming in from overseas, um, you're paying an extra $30, but you can get it a lot faster. Um, this is where you know need to choose between your wallet and your sense of patience. You know, do I want to wait? Or do I want to spend the extra because I want it now, 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 now. So it's really up to you to have a think about that one, everyone. Um, I tend to take uh, the slower route uh, because my, I don't want my budget to take a hit. So when you register with a site, it remembers all your details from the next time you're there. A lot of good sites that go further give you extra options, such as store locators, product information, suggestions on how to use their website and a price checker. It's pretty rare, but it is good that you'll find some sites will do price checkers uh, as well, which is pretty amazing. I'm not gonna name drop any websites this time, uh, but there are a few sites there that, that do give you price checkers. Um, I like comparison sites, and here's some of my favorites. Uh, so ShopBot, Finder, Compare the Market, and Get Price. Uh, .com.au. So for example, if we go to shopbot.com.au, uh, you can see here uh, on Shopbot that there's, oh, oh, here we go, top five webcams, best cameras for video calling. Well, wasn't that prescient? That's fantastic. So right there, you know, what's the best five webcams? Maybe they know that there's something going on where people are using webcams. I don't know. Hmm. So if we have a look at that, they can, you know, you can see lots of articles here. You can see headphones, cameras. I'm going to put in, I'm going to look for something. So uh, say I'm going to put in Canon uh, EOS. Um, there we go. EOS 90D. Right. What are we going to get? 
So, Canon EOS camera. Oh, $1,538. Jeez, whoo. It's a bit of an expensive little camera. But you can see that there's offers next to it as well. $1,545, $1,538 here. And as you scroll down, you can see a lot of other websites. Amazon, George's, um, DigiDirect. So, your cheapest one does look to be... Uh, this particular camera store, but there's a few others. So ShopBot, you can go and look for lots of different items there on ShopBot and get different prices. And then of course you can go straight to the shop and buy it from there if you like. My Scottish bone goes, I think I'll go with the cheapest option on that one. So shopping websites, so ShopBot, finder.com.au, comparethemarket.com.au, and getprice.com.au. So there's quite a lot there for those little websites. So again, shopbot.com.au, finder, F-I-N-D-E-R.com.au, compare the market.com.au. I think they're the ones with the Russian meerkats. Compare the meerkat, that one is the Russians. Um, and getprice.com.au. So they're great websites you can go to and put the name of a product into it and it'll give you uh, lots of different online prices and you can go and do the comparisons and get the, uh, the cheapest one if you like. It's fantastic. So let's cover off some payment methods and then we're going to get into uh, online groceries and shop back as well. So how do we pay for things? Well, basically we're gonna use credit cards or PayPal essentially here. If you've got a debit card that has a MasterCard facility on it, so I've got a MasterCard debit card here. Um, that's my MC debit. Notice that I'm covering the numbers, um, but it's got uh, the MasterCard symbol there. So that MasterCard debit card essentially uses my savings, but it has that MasterCard facility so I can pay with the MasterCard number, but it's only taking from my savings. There's no credit for it to use at all. So if I go shopping on a Monday and I'm broke on a Tuesday, it's all my own fault. So, you know, you've basically just got to deal with it, Matthew. So uh, MasterCard debit cards or PayPal, you get insurance with both, the, both of these types. Uh, whenever you go to a website, remember again to look for the HTTPS uh, or the padlock, HTTPS or the padlock that tells you that you're on a secure website. For example, if I come back to ShopBot here, you can see that again, uh, ShopBot's got the padlock on the left side. And if I click the padlock, I get connection is secure. Your information, for example, password or credit card numbers is private when sent to this website. So this connection is secure pops up. So it tells me that it's absolutely secure. And even if you see the word certificate, that's great. It's what's called a security certificate. All secure websites have a certificate which says, yes, I am secure and I am up to date with the latest security. So that's definitely great to have there. Well, that's, uh, secure. that's secure. There we go. And you can even see the ShopBot security certificate. So yes, we know they're good. Excellent. That's the same as if I went to Maya. You can see that if I go to Maya as well, again, they've got uh, the, oh, Home Sweet Home Tuesdays. Hello. Uh, you know, Don Longy do make really great coffee machines. It just would help if I liked coffee, which I don't. Oh, well. So, but I can see that there again is a padlock there as well. So I know that the Maya website is secure because the padlock. So once we know that those are there, we know that website's secure. We can safely shop there. So you can tell a website is secure if the website address starts with HTTPS. True or false? Those of you who you've got your cameras up, if it's true, I'd like you to do a thumbs up for me. Yes, fantastic. I can see some thumbs up. I'm loving it. Fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, your barb. Baruta, fantastic. 
Well done, everyone. So yes, we know that if, if a website has HTTPS, it's true. Thank you, Beryl and Rochelle. Thank you very much. Lovely. So um, PayPal, oh, PayPal's like a little middleman. So if you create a PayPal account, you can link, link up your bank account. You can link up a credit card to it as well. You can have money put into your PayPal account. PayPal essentially act as a middleman. So they will pay for something for you and then verify the purchase is okay before the money comes from your card. Now, with something like Uber Eats, it's very fast. <laughs> Needless to say that, yes, if you get Uber Eats on your PayPal, it's gone through straight away. But if, say, you got a, a product from a website that was a little bit more obscure, then what you'd find is that might take a couple of hours before PayPal... Uh, uh, approves the purchase and then you know the, the money comes out that's a good thing essentially PayPal are, are paying for it for you in the first place which is great so um, I love PayPal for that um, you can pay for a book online with PayPal so we're coming back into the store here you can see that you've got first name last name so it wants to be to be Gerald uh, there Okay, and then when I tab over, I'm um, apparently Gerald Stevens. There we go. And I've got to put a phone number in here. So 0455-666-777-666. Ooh, how devilish. Now, when I tab around again, I'm putting in the address. So 10 Wallaby Way Badger... Creek, Victoria, 3777, tab again, what's it want? I tick the box, yep, and next payment details, there we go, so card number field, ah, or I could tap PayPal, and then I could type the number in there, here we go, one, two, three, four, Oh, I might go shopping with this number later on. It seems to be a lovely, easy number to remember. Uh, 1121. Isn't that a lovely, easy credit card number to remember? Oh, we can go shopping with that one. Same as not real, really. Uh, we'll tab again to get around. And essentially, you're just popping in all the payment details there. Let's move on. So, because uh, we've got a little bit more to cover yet. So I'm just going to buzz through this part, everyone. Okay, consumer rights. This is important. Okay, consumer rights are very important. So this is a really important thing. So under the Australian Consumer Law, the ACL, when you buy products and services, they come with automatic guarantees that the product will work and it will do what you ask it to do. If you buy something that isn't right, you've got consumer rights to remedy the situation. So this here, we're going to learn about uh, how to return products you bought online and how companies could use your personal information in this section. Once we've done this section, I'm going to open it up to questions. Okay. So if you buy something online and you've, you've, uh, you have the right to return it, if it doesn't do what you expect it to do, is that true in this option where Simon bought a gaming console online, but now that he's received it, it doesn't switch on? Can he return it? Well, yes, he can. All retailers, either in online or in shops, must replace faulty goods. Okay. So now, that's not correct. Yes, if he bought it in a high street shop, he could still get it returned, which is great. So you're covered by the Australian Consumer Law. You can find out more about the Australian Consumer Law at consumerlaw.gov.au. Take this website down, everyone. consumerlaw.gov.au. Now, there's some really great information here about what your law rights are. You know, essentially, uh, your rights as a consumer, um, the ACL basically covers you for more than what your warranties usually do. 
um, a product actually has to work and do what it's supposed to do. So you've also got some options here. They've got some news about uh, COVID-19, so advice for consumers. So rights and refunds, uh, travel and event cancellations because of COVID-19. Uh, gift card laws, gift cards changed in November 2019. So there's a whole lot of changes because gift cards were getting used a lot for scamming. So uh, there's a whole lot of changes there. Lots and lots of information. Uh, have a look in the consumers section, questions and complaints, guides, the whole bit. Have a read. It really is all about what your rights are as the consumer. And you do have rights. You know, if you do buy something online and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, then you're meant to get your money back. If you buy, say, a fridge and it, when it turns up, it doesn't work, it's what's called a DOA, then the retailer has to replace that fridge within 24 to 48 hours, okay, if it's a brand new fridge. If it's something like a TV and it arrives and it's not fixed, it has to be replaced either straight away or repaired. So you've got to be, you know, you've got good rights here. So repairing goods, if you have a minor problem with a product or service, the business can choose to give you a free repair instead of a replacement or refund. If it's a major issue, then you've got the choice to ask for the item to be replaced or to be refunded. You know, um, funnily enough, I had to change, I got sold a wrong light bulb, a light right, I got sold an incorrect light bulb at a big W a couple of weeks ago. And I walked into a different big W and they quite happily took it back because they had the receipt and swapped it over for the right bulb I needed. They were really friendly and just absolutely lovely about it. It was great. So um, you can get things re uh, replaced. Repairs have to be done within a reasonable time frame. Generally, that is 30 days, okay? So if your fridge has to be repaired, it's got to be repaired and back to you within 30 days. The same with uh, TVs and so on. Um, something that's a requirement for life, such as a fridge, should actually be done in 14. But the, the, as far as I understand, the law says it's 30 days. So, um, but if it's a problem that's a major fix, you know, they should just be replacing it anyway. Um, that should go back through the retailer's systems. So you're entitled to return faulty products if you believe there's a problem. You're generally responsible for returning the product if it can be posted or, ease or easily returned. So if it's a small item like jewellery or a handheld product or something like that, you may very well actually be up for having to uh, send that back yourself. Uh, but other uh, particular retailers may actually have an option for that. So do feel free to check with uh, that uh, retailer. Okay, uh, what about a hairdresser if they do wrong things? Interesting question there. Um, okay, so things like air tickets and uh, if they're cancelled, um, you should be talking to uh, the airlines and the Australian Consumer Law uh, and the ACCC as well. If it's something like a hairdresser who's done something wrong, that generally comes under the state jurisdictions such as FIT, the local fair work, um, uh, retail ombudsman, what do they call it? Um, so I'm trying to think of the, the consumer affairs uh, in each state. So if it's something like a hairdresser, you go to consumer affairs. Um, if it's something like airline tickets, you talk to the airline first of all, and then the ACCC. Um, refunds, I think airlines should be giving you refunds. Like if, you follow, if your flight's been canceled because of coronavirus, um, then you should be getting a refund because, you know, it's not any of your own fault. So definitely do check uh, with those people in regards to that. So with faulty goods, if it's a big item, uh, the retailer should be uh, arranging for it to be replaced and for them to do the delivery and the pickup. Small items, you might be up for it yourself. So do give the retailer a call. 
if uh, you have a product that you've paid for and it doesn't turn up, the first thing you do is go straight back to the business. And then the second point of call is the local state or ter territory consumer protection agency. You want to check with those guys because essentially uh, they have the jurisdiction to look after you. Who pays for things that go back? Well, as a general retailer, the uh, rule the retailer should pay um, if the terms and conditions of the retailer don't say who pays for the goods, for the returns, um, then they're the ones who are going to have to pay for it. So again, double check. That's why we get you to look at your terms and conditions. You can always check with the Ombudsman or fair, uh, the Fair Trade Commission, the, um, the Consumer Affairs uh, in your local state as well. Now, all sellers online should provide information about how they take care of the information that you give them, okay, because you give these guys lots of information. They shouldn't be sharing it with anyone, okay? It should never be shared and they should never be passing on information. How do you check if they do share your information? So do you remember when you go to buy something online, often you'll see at the bottom before you go to make the purchase, you agree to receive emails and offers from us. Um, you might also says, um, uh, you might also see one which says, um, you allow us to provide your information to the third parties things like that. So just be aware of those little tick boxes because they're the big ones that you need to look for. Um, also, you can also, um, you can also uh, do a Google search as well. I think someone's got an unhappy puppy. Um, so you can do a Google search for that as well, but it should always be on their website with their details there. I was made aware of something very, very interesting today and I've not known about it before. So I'm going to actually share my screen with you now to show you this, which is Shopback. Okay, so the Shopback website. Okay, so uh, with Shopback, essentially it allows you uh, to be able to uh, see lots of cool little offers and so on. So shop back here essentially uh, lets you see a number of cool little ID, um, promos. So uh, essentially with Shopback, what it does is you can go shopping through various websites. And once you register with Shopback, you can then get cash back directly into uh, your PayPal account. Um, every time you go shopping at one of these retailers. So the website is shopback.com.au, S-H-O-P-B-A-C-K.com.au, shopback.com.au. Um, I've been reliably informed by a certain person that they have done this for about a year and they've earned about $600 back from when they go shopping. So essentially, if I went, say, shopping at Catch Online, which I quite like, um, I could get 3% back every time I shopped at Catch. Um, and you get coupons and discount codes. So there's lots of different options here on Shopback for you to earn money back from websites uh, that you shop with regularly. Okay, so I've only been made aware of this this morning. It's totally new to me as well, um, but I've, it comes with a good recommendation. Uh, so definitely have a look at that. Like I shop a lot at Target, so I get 3% back at Target if I want to. Um, uh, I haven't shopped at Sephora or Adore Beauty in a while, so I don't know, maybe I can shop back there again. No, 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 that's fine. But uh, the whole point of this little uh, website is that it gives you money back whenever you go shopping, okay? And uh, there's quite a few of those sorts of promos that are starting to come through now. So that's shopback.com.au. So just a little recap from a couple of weeks ago, we did an online grocery workshop. Um, and I'm just going to show part of that presentation to you now. So there's quite a few uh, stores that now do online grocery delivery. 
Woolies.com.au, uh, Woolies, yourgrocer.com.au, Happy Apple, Fresh Connection. Um, a lot of these guys do uh, online grocery delivery. Um, so there's quite a few delivery sites you can go to now. You know, you've always got your Uber Eats uh, as well. Uh, so there's lots there that you can get uh, for grocery. Um, what we can see too is I've got another little option here and I've found this one. So uh, Small Farmers United, Jim's Fresh, Fruitastic, Happy Apple. Uh, lots and lots of different little retailers around where you can actually get uh, different groceries. Now I'm gonna actually share with you a document here uh, that has some more information about some of these guys. So I'm just gonna switch to that because I think this is a really good little one for you to see. Um, so I'm gonna share, this is a document that we've created internally, um, but we'd like to share this one with you today. Um, so this is our online grocery shopping. So we've put together a whole lot of uh, different companies here. So freshconnection.com.au, uh, they're in Brighton, Fresh uh, Small Farmers United. So that's delivery around inner north and inner western suburbs with small farm produce. Uh, Jim's Fresh, if you want a copy of this at the end of the workshop, let us know. Uh, pop us an email to hello at Ready Tech Go and we can uh, send you a copy or we'll try and send it out today after the workshop. Uh, Jim's Fresh, uh, which is there in Mornington, but they're available in, in Melbourne, but you've got to check with them. Fruit, veg, dairy. You remember that Coles and Woolies aren't doing uh, deliveries in some areas at the moment. Uh, so some of them are, some of them aren't uh, right now. Rochelle, you had a question? Oh, no, that was about the um, uh, enlarging the screen. Ah, no worries. I go all Sorry. Good. <laughs> oh, good. I'll just pop your hand down. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Okay. So, Jim's Fresh, Fruitastic, all over Melbourne. So, fruit and veggies. Happy Apple, uh, Melbourne as well. Real Fruit Grocer. What else have we got here? Meal Kits. Yes. Okay. Those of you who know me well know that I am not known for being a cook. Okay. I can cook just enough that I need to be able to stop myself from starving. Apart from that, I'm a microwave meal man. Yes, I know, which is terrible. But these meal kits are so cool. So if I decided one day, you know what, I'm going to buy some pots and pans and I'm going to teach myself how to cook, then meal kits are really great. So Dinnerly, Marley Spoon, HelloFresh, Pepper Leaf, what these guys do, their websites, they send you a week's worth of fruit and vegetables um, and meat as well, depending on what your dietary requirements are, with various recipes. You get to choose the recipes and the, the sort of meals you want. Everything you need comes in the box and you just cook it that day and follow the recipe. So some of them do like a week or two weeks worth of meals and it's all your fresh fruit and veg and the meat and all the different components, your spices, all that sort of extra stuff that you need. So dinnerly.com.au, Marley Spoon, Hello Fresh, Pepper Leaf. Um, I think they're around 50 to $60 a week. Um, uh, link was... Um, um, and there's quite a few of these guys. So there's a few of these uh, companies in the meal kit uh, area. So they're great for those that you like to cook. If I'm feeling lazy, then I could go with something like Nourished or You Foods, We Feed You, uh, the Gourmet Dinner Service. Ooh, gourmet Dinner Service sounds nice. Or Dynamic. Now, these are all foods where the meals are made for you already. And all you've got to do is just heat them up. They're usually made handmade or made by chefs as well. So you get really great food, very nourishing food. And all you have to do is actually just pop it in uh, the microwave and uh, give it a ding. You can get your pantry uh, stuff through Officeworks, Target, Big W, Cat, Amazon and Kogan. Yes, Kogan actually have pantry supplies. Uh, you can get some uh, basics through Officeworks as well, uh, which is pretty fantastic. 
uh, the catch website, you can get lots of different things. You can support your local restaurants as well. Like a lot of your local restaurants um, have their own websites or their own little apps that you can order from them. Otherwise, you can use uh, Uber Eats or Menulog or uh, Deliveroo or DoorDash or Easy, uh, Fedora. Easy is really Asian. Um, I think it's like the Asian um, one. Uh, all my Asian friends love easy. They go, oh, yeah, it's all Korean. It's fantastic. Um, Food Panda, uh, Eat Now, Postmates. I mean, there's just so many of uh, these guys now that are in this area for food delivery. And often the guy that delivers your Uber Eats probably also delivers your food, um, your Postmates, your Eat Now, your DoorDash, and your Easy. Like, they all do them all, essentially. But um, the whole point of these services is that it makes it easy to get a meal delivered. However, be prepared to pay up to $5 for a delivery fee for some uh, items that you're purchasing. Some uh, of them don't charge delivery for your first month. Uh, for example, if you join DoorDash, uh, you get uh, your first month of uh, delivery free. Now, for those of you who haven't used Uber Eats before, um, if you would like, if you want to try Uber Eats, uh, what you can do is you can also uh, use a code to get $10 off Uber Eats. So if you've never used Uber Eats before, I'm going to give you a code now so that you can get $10 off your first order. And I'll see if I can get you one for DoorDash as well. Uh, so try this Eat Uber Eats code, E-A-T-S, Eats, E-A-T-S, dash 5D for Delta, Y for Yellow, the number 5, S for Sam, U-E. So that code again, Eats, dash 5 Delta Yankee, so 5-D-Y, 5-S-U-E, Sue. It's 5DY5SUE. So that's a code that'll get you $10 off uh, at Uber Eats. It's pretty amazing. I use Uber Eats, DoorDash, Deliveroo. Um, I've used a few of them in my time. I used to use Menulog uh, as well, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, DoorDash also. Uh, lets you do some of them too. You can refer friends. There's lots of these guys will give you money. So lots of different food services there that you can see. Okay, so now also in regards to this, so we've had a look at that. Righto. So um, Airtask will help you out. Remember with all of these sort of food services, you're going to need a credit card of some kind. Uh, as well. So you'll be needing to use uh, one of those. So some of our services offer, you, offer apps. You'll need a credit card, MasterCard, Visa, debit card or PayPal, uh, essentially uh, for these guys. Um, now, if you're doing online grocery delivery, um, if you order your groceries first thing in the morning, there's an opportunity for you to get them delivered in the afternoon, depending on the grocer uh, that you're using. Uh, make sure your contact details are up to date as well. Make sure those contact details are completely uh, up to date there. Okay. Uh, Right. Oh, sorry, everyone. I'm just wondering if you can see the correct screen. Uh, there we go. Okay. Can you all see the presentation screen? Yep, you can. Fantastic. Great. Beautiful. Excellent. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Fantastic. So, uh, web browser Safari or Chrome. Um, yeah, same time next day and so on. Uh, Woolies. Now, what do we? How do we do it? So, browse to your chosen site, check and search items, go to your checkout, set up your delivery, and choose the delivery times that you'll be home. Often they give you a two to four hour delivery time, and it comes sometimes could be morning or afternoon, depending on the retailer. 
your food should arrive in crates or boxes or plastic bags. Um, generally, where possible, it's going to be cardboard boxes, but sometimes it may turn up in plastic bags. It should be separated. Co all the cold stuff together, meat together, fruit together, um, tin goods together. Generally, they will try and separate that. Um, if things aren't available, the grocer may replace it or you know, refund you the money or not charge you for it. We talked a little bit about food delivery there as well. So Uber Eats, Deliveroo, DoorDash, Menulog, Easy, Foodora, Food Panda. Hey, and you can even get alcohol delivered with Tipple. Yes. So if you like a drink, you can have one and have it delivered. Could be slightly dangerous for some of us, but no, it's a, not necessarily a bad thing. So yes, you can have our drinks delivered. A lot of these sites are app based. They might have a website, but they're more of an app. So you're going to need to download the app, install the app, put in your credit card details and your home address details, and then sometimes a preference for what you like, and then you'll be able to start using the app. Now, so here we are again, online buying and selling. For those of you who haven't made aware of, if you do want to get a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our trainers, uh, it's $90 an hour. You, we do three packs for $255, five lessons for $420, 10 lessons for $830. So you can have 10 weekly sessions with me. Yes, from my house, my house to your house. Very lovely, 10 packs, three packs, five packs, all the single hours, really up to you. Um, of course, the workshops as well. So selling online, I'm gonna quickly cover through this. If you're gonna sell at the moment, you're gonna be sending things off. You're not gonna be selling face to face, okay? You know, gum tree sales, having people turn up to your house, that's all out. Okay, so because we're in the coronavirus time, so you're most likely going to have to go on down to somewhere like Pack and Send and get them to do it for you. So really, we're more going to be buying than we are selling. But for your future reference, do some research, check out sites that you want to sell things through, accurately weigh items. You might not even be selling them. What if you're selling something, you're sending something off to family and friends to help them out? Again, places like Pack and Seed might be a good option. Uh, accurate descriptions if your items and price realistically if you're selling, okay? Um, use secure websites, include postage, accept cash for small amounts. Of course, we're not doing any cash at the moment. We're not out and about and seeing each other. But after this is all over, when things return to normal, then yes, you could do cash sales if you wanted to. Lots of different little options there. So don't compromise your security, don't give away personal information, don't use personal bank accounts, don't accept personal checks, and never, ever, ever, particularly in this time, ever, don't ever buy iPhones, iPads, or smartphones secondhand online. Don't do it. Particularly not through Gumtree or anything like that. They're most likely to be stolen. If you want to get yourself an iPhone or an iPad, buy it at retail brand new or a refurbished model. But definitely don't buy them through secondhand. They're most likely to be stolen. Don't sell jewelry or art or securities and don't accept large payments. So as we looked at earlier, Google search to check out a website, research the site. Is it there and you know, are items around that what you're looking for? Um, do you buy what you want new, used or refurbished? So check the pricing and the, and the conditions when you're buying online. Uh, used items have no warranty, whereas refurbished items that you might buy will should have a warranty, generally three months. Um, check that the sellers will ship to Australia. Um, and uh, check if you're buying through Gumtree or eBay, if the seller has any negative reviews. Again, you're gonna get them to send something to you. So you wanna be in touch with that seller that you're purchasing from on Gumtree or eBay. You wanna be in touch with them to find out, you know, what their reviews are like. Are they reputable? Um, will they send it to you in Australia? When do they want the money? All that sort of stuff. So just be very careful with that.
So check for alternative payment options such as PayPal or Afterpay. I love Afterpay because it means I can go and buy something and have it delivered and still pay it off over the following four fortnights. Um, I particularly do that with shoes because uh, I love my runners. Um, so it's a great way to get a hundred, you know, a pair of shoes uh, and pay it off every fortnight essentially, but own them at the same time. Uh, ask for tracking numbers for your purchase so you can monitor deliveries that come through. Uh, use reputable, reputable established online stores and you know, do a Google search, check them out first. Uh, check your credit card regularly for unauthorized purchases. Report to your bank account if you think something's not right. Uh, don't use personal checks or credit cards for private purchases. Never pay cash. Um, you know, if you're having to buy something that's very expensive, you know, pay with a bank check. Don't necessarily pay with cash. That's, that's gonna get you in trouble. So there's lots of websites that you can use to go buying and shopping online. Here's a couple of majors, eBay, Gumtree, Amazon, uh, Etsy, which is people buying and selling their own homewares and places like Society6 and Redbubble. If you're paying, as we've talked about earlier, use a credit card or PayPal, particularly. Um, I like to use PayPal when I've never been to a site before. Instead of giving that website uh, my credit card number, I'll actually use PayPal instead. So that way, if anything goes wrong, I'm covered with the insurance from PayPal. So PayPal is a really great option in that one. Um, Afterpay, as I was saying, for spreading the cost of the items, you can do that online purchases as well, which is pretty amazing. Now, what if uh, you want something shipped over from America, but the company doesn't ship to Australia? So there's freight forwarding, Shopmate, Com Gateway, Shipito, My US, USA to Me, USA to Oz. You know, if it's something that you want shipped from America and they don't ship to Australia, these guys essentially can arrange that for you. What they do is they have it delivered to an American warehouse address. It's picked up from the warehouse and then sent via standard mail to Australia. Different postage fees and charges will apply. So lots of different sites there you can go and shop at. Mm -hmm. So let's just recap a couple of things here. So we've talked about Be Connected, the Be Connected website. So um, be connected, be connected .e .gov .au. Uh, So definitely if you're not signed up to Be Connected, do make sure that you get yourself signed up. It's free, which is great. And so many great little free lessons in Be Connected that you can learn, uh, which is fantastic. They've got so many different little topics here. So do feel free to go through and have a look. Uh, we talked about online grocery as well. So we covered a little bit more about online grocery as well. Um, do feel free to check out Coles Online, Woolworths Online, uh, yourgrocer.com.au. There's quite a few of these amazing little grocery companies now. So you can even uh, just Google up food delivery or online grocery delivery, uh, Melbourne. So there's lots of that there. Can I just remind you that though, keep records of what you buy. Um, if you're using your credit card, particularly keep a record of it and approach the bank um, and the retailer if you've got any problems. You have the, Austra the Australian consumer law to look after you uh, if there's any problems. So ACL, the Australian consumer law under consumerlaw.gov.au, it essentially says that the product should do what it's meant to do. It should do that for a reasonable lifetime. So it often will override the standard one year warranty. So if you've say bought a product and it fails one, just after that one year, you may be able to cite the consumer law to be able to get that product replaced or serviced as well.